never know. Y'all chilly? Y'all only turn the heat up a little bit? Please. All right. Okay. <laughs> I've been saying it about four or five times this morning. Yeah, it's getting on. Okay. We said it four or five times this morning. You have not because you asked not. <laughs> if y'all was cold, y'all should have asked and I turned to you. can't help all the flames and everybody's Well, I just think people like to be comfortable. Maybe they taught it. I don't know. People have a lot of different things that they're working with. <laughs> you know, I can't remember the year I don't reckon that it came out. But there was a song, I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. And Hank Snow, across the desert, fair man. Been there. And then he starts going through Alabama, Chicago. <laughs> I don't remember all that stuff. But he'd been everywhere. <laughs> he'd been absolutely everywhere. And you know, the song is upbeat, and everybody in here pretty much has heard it because everybody's giggling, right? <laughs> That young man that's got through singing the song, excuse me, I about lost my piece of candy. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. We need to keep that thought in mind first. If there's nothing gonna steal my joy, but I'm gonna go back to what been everywhere, man. And I was reminded last week, Sister Della stood right up in here. And I don't know how the conversation came up, but she said, Brother Jared, she said, when I was coming up, she said, we didn't have a car. She said, you know how we got back and forth? She said, we had a horse and a wagon. I've been on a horse and a wagon. Not as my primary vehicle, but I have rode on one. And it began to dawn on me when God was putting this message together and giving it to me, I was thinking to myself, now I've been, I've drove cross country with my kids. When I lived up in central Kentucky, mom and my stepdad, lived another two hours or two and a half hours up from us. So anytime we loaded up all four kids, anytime we loaded up all four kids, now I'm telling you, that, you know, they ranged, they was all different ages. I think it'll slow down and speed up one or the other. We'll see what happens there. But anyway, they were all different ages, but still. Now this was back before the cell phones and the tablets and the DVD players that hang over the back of the seats and all this stuff to occupy somebody. Now I'm telling you, you put four kids in a car and you head back down here, which was a three and a half hour trip, or you try to go up to my mom's house, which is a two and a half hour trip, it don't take long that your nerves are getting about half spent. <laughs> and the one thing, and I know you guys have heard this more times than not from the back seat, are we there yet? Can you imagine being on a, in a wagon with a horse? <laughs> and 16 kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Daddy must have been moonshiners or something. <laughs> 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 six, six, 16 kids. <laughs> they had to know God a whole lot, I tell you. Because I almost guarantee you that that came out of somebody's mouth, it did mine, out of everybody's mouth that's ever rode behind mom and daddy. Are we there yet? Because we get so tired of riding. I used to tell my kids, I said, just look out the window and look at all the pretty stuff. They're too busy back there flapping them guns because they're complaining that they don't like, they're ready to get to where they're supposed to be. They knew we was going to Mamma. They knew we was coming out here to see Papa. They knew the destination. Let that sink in for just a minute. They knew the destination. They knew where they were going to the point that they did not even enjoy the journey. How many of us are exactly the same way? We talk about that all the time in here, don't we? We talk about going home, and we all want to. But the thing is, is we don't allow ourselves a lot of times to enjoy the journey. God told us, he said, take no thought for tomorrow. He said, there's enough evil in it for itself. He said, I came that you may have life and have it what? More abundantly. If you're going 100 miles an hour down the road, you're missing a whole lot of just life. We 
get in a real big hurry, don't we? You can go outside and look when it's not real cloudy, and you can see 40 gazillion airplanes going all over the place. Hundreds of miles an hour. They got these Concorde jets now to get you from one side of the planet to the other side of the planet in just a couple hours. Why are we in such a hurry? Sometimes you just need to, as the song said, stop and smell the roses. Because you can be in such a big hurry that God has blessings sitting all over the side of the road that he's wanting you to travel, and you're at a dead run, and you walk past so many things that he's wanting to do for you. We try so hard to be in a hurry to the point that we complain and we moan and groan that we can't enjoy it. And a lot of times, even on the flip side, most people that surround us can't enjoy the journey either. He just sat up here and sang, ain't nobody going to steal my joy. Is that not what he just sang? And that's what the Bible tells us, to let no man steal your joy. I'm going to be happy today. And God's will, listen to me, I'm going to be happy again tomorrow. Because every journey starts with a step. It don't take out of the dead run. There are times that you have to pick the pace up a little bit. But there are times that you just need to slow down. I remember Sister Darlene and I, Sister Darlene and I was heading to, over to get my Jeep. She took me over to buy my Jeep. Of course, she let me drive her. And I was going up 41. And she said, why are you going up 41? She said, I always go the interstate. I said, because it takes you longer. And she said, there's no way. I said, oh, yeah, it is. I said, I can get to Henderson faster going up 41 than you can going up the parkway. She said, that don't make any sense. I said, just because you can drive 15 mile an hour faster, it's a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let that sink in for just a minute. The Bible tells us that narrow is the way. Sometimes you need to just pull off the main interstate and start looking around and living life. Stop at one of these biggest balls of yarn or biggest frying pan spectacles. You know, they got these things all around everywhere. You know, the biggest chunk of whatever. People stop and look at it. If you ever drove across country, they got all these kind of things. Biggest ball of twine, you know, biggest fake elephant, whatever it might be. They got all kind of stuff on there. But we're too busy. We're out jumping around too much that we don't seem to sit back and understand that it is our responsibility not only to see the beauty that God has unfolded in front of us. It's this world's beautiful. If you just take time to look at it. Because there's so much hatred, so much everything else, and I've got to hurry and hurry and hurry because I've got to beat so-and-so to get this. No, you don't. That is a ploy of the devil to keep you moving, keep you going, because you're not listening to God when you're falling into path. And the book of Romans tells us to do, to do what? Be not conformed to this world. He created us to be separate people. He said, come out from them and be ye separate. I remember growing up, my mom always told me, she said, son, I always dance to a beat of a different drum. I mean, she passed the drum to me because I'm banging on it too. I have people look at me so much different, but they understand because I'm a Christian man. Amen? And I'm going to enjoy the journey because there's going to come a day that I'm not going to be here. And I don't want to be laying on a deathbed with the woulda, shoulda, and coulda, so I suck every amount of joy out of this life that I possibly can. Amen. Amen. Because there may come a time in my life that I won't be able to. I can still rejoice in my spirit, but my physical body may not let me enjoy the things that God has in store for me. He brought up Brother Donnie Groves last week. He said, Brother Donnie Groves is 58 years old. Diabetes is taking his walking away from him. Diabetes is taking his eyes away from him. Diabetes has just tore his body to smithereen. But yet that spirit that's inside of him is renewed every day. And I dare say that anybody in here that's ever heard him speak, ever talked with him, ever heard him sing, somebody please tell me I'm lying. That man's full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Even in spite of his situation. He could have got out on the main line and keep doing, you know, like everybody else does. Like they did tell their brother Jackie Dale. Start taking the pain medicine. I'm not doing that mess. God told me not to. He could go 
telephone, a pity party of all the stuff going on in his physical body. But bless God, he says, roll me up to the piano. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And he lives every day of his life with joy and with happiness, even if he feels bad. Yep. Because, you know, we just have to thank God that he's given us another day. Yep. Psalms 118, 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Amen? Amen. How many of you live joyous and happy? I do. Every day of my life. Well, preacher, don't you get down? Yeah, but I'm still happy. I may be going through a bump in the road, but I'm still happy. I'm content. And I look forward to what God's going to do for me the rest of the day. I'm not concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow. Just like Sister Della said a while ago, y'all go ahead and sing now because I may not be here next week. Mm -hmm. Amen? Bless God, I hope she is. But if she ain't, I'm glad we got to sing to her. I'll see you later, Jim. Amen. Turn over to the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes. Like I say, I was, I was telling you, you know, to stop being so rushed and hurried to get to the end that you miss out on the joy of your journey, that you miss out on the trip. You know, when I was growing up, I recall Daddy had a 1970 some odd Ford LTD. I don't remember had a seatbelt in it at all. It was green. Nowadays, if you don't buckle a kid up with a three-point harness and wrap them in bubble wrap and you know and, and do all kind of stuff, I understand about protecting your kids. When I was a kid, it was called the back windshield. <laughs> they don't make cars like that no more. Back there where the speakers were. That was, that's, I laid down back there, so I never had. And on purpose, if I was acting up, Daddy'd hit the brakes and throw me in the pool. <laughs> I'm not joking at all. Yep, it happened. And in that pool, boy, there was the transmission hump. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. The bell housing, yep. Yeah. Hurts, too. <laughs> but it's a teaching gear. I didn't die. <laughs> The thing is, it's an attention giver, you know, but the thing is, we need to pay more attention to what the world is going on now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 10. It says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. You won't be able to do anything anymore once they put dirt on you. Your life is done. It says you need to work and do it with as much might as you can. You need to be happy and do it with as much might as you can. I preached in here about David when the ark came back into the city. It says David did it with joy with all his might. Every fiber of his being wanted to be happy, and it was happy, and he was blessed. Even though things were going wrong and bad in his life, he was still joyous and happy. God gave us life, and he gave us life that we may live more abundantly. He said, my joy, my peace, I give to you. For what? For us to just set it up somewhere on a shelf? No. He said, my peace, I give to you. My joy, I give to you that your joy may be full. Amen? Praise God. Let's go and read this a little bit more. Verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, uh, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but a time and chance happened to them all. What did that say right there at the beginning? That the race is not for the swift. Sit back, let's just sit back in there just a minute. Everybody in here is running a race right now. How many of you ever watched the Boston Marathon? Anybody ever seen them long distance things? I remember in school, us fat kids, well, I didn't run, but we had these cross country teams. How many of you know when they start out on that marathon, they're doing just like this? Huh? They don't take out of the dead hard sprint. You try running a hard sprint for 25 miles. See how that works out. Kind of brings me into, and I got tickled this morning because the Lord laid something on my heart this morning. Y'all remember the story? A 
about the tortoise and the hare? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Slow and steady wins the race. It's not a sprint, folks. It's a marathon. So take your time. We're all going. We're all going to cross the same line. Mm -hmm. You may get there before I do. I don't care. I'm still going. I'm still going to win, but I'm going to go at my pace. The hardest thing for me to see as a preacher is sitting back and not seeing people in churches. People telling me at work, well, I used to go to church and I don't anymore because people are getting spiritually drained trying to keep up and run a race with everybody else when they're unknowledgeable, they're unknown. I mean, they don't know because they've not been taught and they're not strong enough in the Word of God and they get so discouraged and they miss out on church. Because I'm not what I'm supposed to be. You get spiritually drained. <coughs> Try to run somebody else's race. Stay in your lane. Run your race at your pace. Amen. Amen. You know, when I was in the Marine Corps, we ran all the time. And y'all heard, you know, whether it be in the Army, Marines, whoever it is, y'all heard them when they're up there and they're running. And they're singing cadence, right? I wonder why they do that. It's to help your lungs. It's to help you breathe. Because you're trying to take in air and you're trying to sing the whole time that you're running. Plus it takes your mind off the fact that you're running. But you know what? They told us, they said, if you get to where you can't sing cadence, you're running too fast. Sit there for just a minute. Maybe you are running too fast in your spiritual life because sometimes you find it hard to even speak the name Jesus. Jesus. <sighs> Sound familiar, don't it? Many of us are getting out here and getting wore out and we're tired because we're not running the race that God has put before us. Amen. We're trying to keep up with Joe Schmo and Sister So-and-So and Uncle So-and-So and this one done that one. Don't worry about what they're doing. When you sit back at the ones you're trying to keep up with, look at the smiles on their faces because they're running their race at their pace and going exactly where God told them to go. You're trying to be a follower, but you need to be a follower of Jesus, and he will give you the pace that you need to be on, and he's going to give you the place you need to be, and therefore that's where your joy will come. When you're where you're supposed to be in Jesus and you're doing what you're supposed Amen. to be doing in Jesus, your joy will be full. Amen. 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 Y'all sit back and see me grinning. I know I got some bad teeth, look like a jack o' lantern pumpkin, but I'm still going <laughs> to grin. I'm still going to have a good time. I know I'm a born again child of God. I know where the destination is. I don't know when I'm going to get there. Bless God, I'm still going. And I'm going to have myself a time while I'm on the way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just like the little fella saying, ain't nothing going to steal my joy. Amen? Amen. Right. You're going to have a bad day. Sometimes it's just going to happen. But even in spite of it, smile and say, praise God. Praise God. Even in spite of what's going on in your life. But I was talking about the tortoise and the hare and whatnot. I got still a sidetrack there a little bit. You know, the thing is, the bad part about it is you've got a whole lot of Christians that will do that, especially when they're first born again. They have an excitement. They have a vigor. They have so much, you know, want to about them that they're going to, whoo, I'm going to save everybody. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then about six months into it, they're sitting back going, <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. Y'all seen it? May happen to y'all. Did me? Mm -hmm. To the point that you're going to get burned out and you're like, if this is what it's supposed to all be about, I ain't having none of it. And you keep getting empty seats. Empty seats. Mm -hmm. Empty seats. Because those of us that are out here just doing our own pace ain't going up and saying, hey, just slow down. You'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Just slow down. You don't have to do it all in one day. See, we have a responsibility as us older Christians. We have a responsibility just like with these children. We can't let them just come up and say, okay, we're going to do it our way. Hold on. Train up a child in the ways of the Lord. And when they're older, they will not stray from it. I wonder why I said that. Because that's exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to tell them how to keep their own pace. We're supposed to tell them how to walk a Christian life. We're supposed to tell them how to have joy every day and you can have happiness every day. That's our responsibility. 
Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, we do pay a whole lot of attention. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from heaven. I'm not taking anything away from Jesus. I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to live there for eternity. But I already know where the victory is. I know I've got a crown waiting for me. Amen. Amen. I know there's a mansion waiting for me. I know my Jesus is waiting for me. Yes. That is my reward. Amen? Amen? That is my reward. Amen. Why would I not be joyous over knowing that that's where I'm going? Amen? Amen? And he wants to bless us every day. We just need to take the time to see it. You know, so many people, though, say, well, they take advantage of the tortoise part of it. They'll sit back and they'll say, well, that tortoise part sounds pretty good to me. I'm just going to go real slow at it then. Then you get some people that sit back and they use that. God may not have told you to go slow. Maybe you're supposed to pick your pace up a little bit. But it's a lot more convenient for you to sit back and say, well, I'm just going to be the tortoise. No, you're going to be a lazy person in what you are. Mm -hmm. You can be a lazy Christian and blame it on whatever you want to. Well, this is the pace God gave me. No, that's the pace you chose. And you wonder why it seems like you're running in mud because you're not going the direction that God wants you to go. You can go too fast, heading toward God, that you can outrun Him. You can also get so slow that you lose Him in your vision. That's what we talked about last Sunday, wasn't it? Remember I sat up here and I said, you know, Sister Angie said that was one of her favorite sermons about me following my daddy's footprints. I said, if I didn't keep in those footprints or keep my eye on Him, I'd look up and He'd be gone. Said that, wasn't it? Yep. That's the problem with a lot of us Christians. We get out here and still want to do it our way, and then we can hit you moan and complain and grumble and just kind of, well, fine, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm going to go to church. How come God's not blessing me? He's trying. You're too far back there worried about what happened in a curve sometime in your life that you're not staying on track with the road and the path that you need to be on. Once you go around the curve, that curve is behind you. Do you understand that? You don't have to go back to it. You continue to go straight. The Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way. If it passes you, take the rear view, spiritual rear view mirror off, throw it out the window, and look forward. And just grin, grin, grin. Because nothing makes the devil mad than for him to sit back and see a happy Christian. That's right. that's Amen? Amen? You know, he, that's his deal. He wants to get us all down. He wants to get us down and have us to where we're all wallowing around and stuff and this and that. But you know, I started out by talking. I said, you know, back in my day, we used to call it getting off the main drag. Yep. I know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yep. You know, you get out here on these four lanes. I've been up in New York and there's six lanes. Sometimes there's eight. And everybody going about 80 some odd mile an hour. Mm -hmm. Bumper to bumper. And I'm not joking at all. If you ever been up there, I'm telling you, it's a mess. And everybody going a 1,000 mile an hour. And the whole thing is, you can't get off the road where you want to. You'll end up, end up 10 miles on down the road because they ain't going to let you get over. Mm -hmm. And just like I had told Darlene, and she didn't believe me until she seen the road sign, I said, you can get to Henderson quicker up 41. Brother, Brother Ray just sat there and nodded a while ago. You can get there faster up 41 because, matter of fact, the house that Brother Ray and, and Sister Deli live in right now is where I was living when I started working at Accurite. It is exactly almost to the tenth, 12 miles from that doorstep to the parking lot where I work. I told Darlene that. She said, really? I said, yeah. She said, when I'm going up the parkway, she said, y'all seen it. She said, there's a sign sitting out there that says Henderson, 11 miles. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, and I said, that's back on uh, the Seabury side of Roberts, too. She said, wow. I said, oh, yeah. I said, it's quicker to go up 41. You may be driving slower, but you're getting off the main drag. Because when you do that, you're going to get yourself out of a lot of danger. Because you got a lot of idiots out there on that four lane. You know, the Bible, I mean, the, you know, they give us a speed limit. It's posted on the side of the road. That's not, a, that's not just a suggestion. That means don't go over this limit. But you get people out there that will drive back. I've seen them all the time. They'll drive past you 
with a donut in one hand, cell phone, and riding with their elbow, and I'm driving 70 mile an hour, <coughs> like I'm not even there. Y'all seen these people? I don't understand. I mean, they're pretty talented. I'll give them that. But if you're in such a hurry that you can't pull over and eat a donut, wait to where you're going. If you can't just pick up the phone and call somebody, you got to really do that much stuff. Seen people putting on makeup, talking on the phone, still driving with the elbow. My late stepdad would go down the road, and he would just take his hand and come off the wheel. She's seen him do it many times. I'm not joking. 55 mile an hour going down the road. Nothing on the steering wheel. Trying to want to get that cigarette lit. And you're sitting over going, here we go. Seriously. People get so distracted. He had no idea what he was driving by. He didn't care. He wanted to get that cigarette lit. He wanted to know what he wanted when he wanted it. To the point it didn't even matter what I was wanting. I don't want to get out of the truck, to be honest with you. But well, that's for a whole other story, I reckon. Yeah, that's going to sound now. But the thing is, you know, sometimes we do need to get off of the main drag. We need to come out and find out. I mentioned this a while ago. It's in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. It's going to turn over there. Book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. It says, Hear ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there will be that find it. You know, you go out here on these cow pastures and whatnot. They got trails. Every one of them sitting there following each other, ain't they? Well, that's what so and so done. I reckon that's what I'll do too. That's what Brother Ray's doing. I guess I'll do it too. See, I'm that wild one that takes off across the field doing like that. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Everybody here does. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be a willy-nilly Christian, be one. Be joyous and happy. It don't matter hell and bees to me what people like to look at me and how they think. It doesn't matter. I am joyous. I'm joyous in the Lord. And you want to know why? Because I got off of that beat, off that big wide path. I got out from behind off of that interstate. I started taking Sassafras Grove Road. I started driving up 41. You understand what I'm saying now? You got to get out from the main path of this thing and start walking your path because it says that narrow is the way Amen. and few there be that find it. Hmm. Pretty good stuff. If you're not looking for it, how many of you, I know Brother Allen told us back here this morning, he said, you know, he said, I'm not real good at remembering road numbers. He said, I remember landmarks. He said, the problem is, he said, if somebody cuts down a tree or a house, you know, falls in, he said, I'm lost at that point. Uh -huh. You know, if we look around and we start paying attention, you know, I've told somebody before, they said, well, how do you get to your church? And I said, there's actually about five different ways. And they said, what? I said, anywhere around Seabury and Florida, and basically Webster County, mm -hmm. pretty much every road is going to intersect with itself at some point in time. All of them do. You're going to end up turning around, and you can go 15 different ways to get to Dixon. You've got about five different ways to get up here on top of this hill. But the thing is, is how did we find out that we had these different ways? Because we went and looked at other roads. We didn't just stay on the same path that everybody else was. Well, I only knew about one way to get there because you were following everybody else. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is each one of us have a race. You have one, I have one. We are all going to cross. The Bible says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Mm -hmm. I don't care how fast you decide you want to try to run your race. You're not going to be first over me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because what's going to happen is when we all get there, just like we hold our hands in here in church and dismissing our prayer, we're all going to stand right there and wait until everybody gets on the line. We're all going to step in together. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. You're not going to be any greater than anybody just because you're out here going, Woo, I'm just doing all kinds of stuff for God. And he's like, no, you're just doing stuff. Mm -hmm. But all are you doing for me? 
You're doing to be seen. You're doing to be heard. But what are you doing in my name? What in Jesus' name are you doing? And I don't mean that derogatory. So don't take that wrong. What in his name are you doing? I don't know. I know you don't because you're at a dead run all the time. Pace yourself. Stay in the word. Understand where he wants you to go. You're not going to win any kind of race if you don't know the course. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 You can get out here and try to run a race, but if nobody told you where you were going, you just run out through the cornfield. I think this is where I'm going. You're wrong. It tells you right here how to walk, where to walk, when to walk. Amen? Each and every one of us. It tells each and every one of us that. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. How sad that is. You know, the thing, when we go to getting discouraged, and again, I mentioned it a while ago, I've seen people do it time and time and time again. Brother Jackie Dale and I, as a matter of fact, had talked to a couple of different of the same people and were told basically the same thing. I grew up in church. I came to church. I went to church. And I did this in church. And the thing is, if you had somebody come by and they were, you know, made them feel bad because, you know, they didn't dress the same way that you did or they were doing this the wrong way or they ended up trying to be just like you and then they found out that how, what you were doing when you got out of church, what you were doing when you wasn't in church or you were going on Wednesday night when you're not supposed to be going there. And they go to getting discouraged. I've seen it. I've had to try to talk to people. And they say, well, I just don't know, preacher. I just don't know if I can ever get back in to where I'm supposed to be. Well, the thing is, is it's still our job. We still need to be telling them. Just like I said a while ago, we still need to be directing them. Just because you might be falling behind in your own race doesn't mean that you're out of the race. Amen? Mm -hmm. You can still be running. Don't get discouraged thinking because I'm not keeping up with so-and-so. I don't feel the spirit like brother so-and-so does or sister so-and-so does. God deals with you in your own way, in your own compassion. I can get up here and shout, speak in tongues and raise my hand when the Holy Spirit moves upon me. That's how I feel. That's what he moves on me. But I can tell you right now, there are people in this congregation, because I told y'all, I have an advantage. I can see everybody up here. And I see people sitting there and they got nothing but solitary tears rolling down their face. And they're just as filled with the Holy Ghost Spirit as what I am. Amen. 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 Everybody doesn't have to be loud. Everybody just doesn't have to be seen. But one thing you do need to be seen of is God. Amen. When you see him and he can see you, that's when those tears are going to start flowing down your face. Bless God, that's when if he calls you to do that, your hands are going to raise up. Tongues are going to come out of your mouth. You're going to take off running around the church because that's what he wants you to do. Amen. 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 You know, the thing is, is we have a lot of people, and I'm not saying in this church, but there are churches that I've been in, and, you know, and you have a good spirit-filled service, and as soon as you walk outside the door, y'all know how we sit out there and talk a lot here, too. And you walk past people, and you're shaking hands, or you're standing out there shaking hands as they go by, and then you start hearing this. Mm -hmm. Right after church service! Mm -hmm. Did you see so-and-so? He was just acting like an idiot up there with this flaw in her hand. Did you see sister so-and-so? She was just crying and snotting. I couldn't pay no attention to what the preacher was saying. <laughs> Y'all heard the time. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Ain't a bit more in here to get nothing but just a, some kind of mess that they can talk about somebody else and then how dare them go out even out the church door and talk to somebody who may have been blessed during that service and then turn right around the joy that that person received and they snatch it away from them. Sound familiar? How many of you ever got up and left the church service and just felt the overwhelming presence of God and just felt so good, and all of a sudden, as soon as you get outside, they're like, yeah. <laughs> Next thing you do, you find yourself listening to it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then everything the pastor talked about, gone. Mm -hmm. Let nobody steal your joy. You know, I've told so many people, and I sat up here behind this pulpit. I said, you're entitled to your opinion. I said, I, I don't want it. Give it to yourself. You can tell me what you think, but I just assume you're not. Amen? Tell me what you believe. Amen. I'm more interested in what you believe than just what you think. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm going to tell you, a lot of times your thoughts ain't going to add up with what God wants in your life. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. You know, I was mentioning a while ago, I can't run Brother Jackie Dale's race. My mother can't run mine. I'd like to sometimes. <laughs> Sister Brittany can't run Sister Brother John's race. They're married, and they have individual races themselves, just like every other married couple in here. Brother Jackie Dale has his race. Sister Ashley has her race. And then the Bible says that the two flesh has now become one. Now they have a race together. But I'm going to tell you what. That's the reason the Bible says don't be unequally yoked with somebody that's a non-believer because one's going to be pulling harder than the other one. And you're going to wonder why both of you are not going where you need to be. You wonder why divorce rate is up as high as it is. It's because husbands are trying to do just their thing and not work with the family part of it. Wives are trying to do just their thing and not trying to help the husband and work together as a family, going in one direction, in one mind, in one accord, seeking the face of God. Amen. Every Sunday, that couple sitting in here, that couple, that couple, that couple. You understand what I'm saying? Every Sunday, right back there, people are coming to church, husbands and wives, because they have like mind and like accord, and we know that this is what we need to be doing. I'm going to live my life, you can live your life, and we're going to live our lives together. There's a whole pew full of a family sitting right there. One right back there. Amen? Because they're listening and they're obeying God. They're being themselves, but they're also being a unit as well. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before who? Us. Run with patience the race that is set up before us. Y'all thought I was making that up, didn't you? Huh. Let us run with patience the race that is set up before us. Verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That is my reward. Amen? Amen? He already won the race. He showed me that I can go. He showed me that I can win the race as well. He said, see, son, I've done it. Keep your eyes on me, and you can do it. Amen. And he says, go at the pace I tell you to go. When I tell you to go. Amen. Amen. Just like we preached the last two Sundays, we've got to be listening for him, and we've got to be looking for him. Amen. And you can't do that going 100 mile an hour all the time. You know, the devil wants to keep us busy, 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 busy. That's the reason people don't have prayer life no more. That's the reason people don't step back with their families. You know, more times than not, I remember growing up, we'd eat dinner at the table. Mm -hmm. Now everybody got two TV trays, and they sit down in the living room so they watch a ball game. Either that or the kids are out playing in the yard, mom and dad are in here trying to eat a sandwich, and then the kids, people just don't eat together anymore. They don't do a whole lot of things together at all anymore. Some families they do. More times than not, they don't. Here or there, you get somebody. I remember growing up, I know some of y'all in here are spite older than I am. Now, if I went to my mom's house, or I was at home with daddy, whatever was cooked and put on the table, that's what you ate. That's right. Yep. If you didn't eat it, guess what? You was hungry. <laughs> but just like a dog, if you get hungry enough, you'll eat it. I don't care what it is. I did it. I didn't get fat just off blowing. <laughs> the thing is, is we allow, you know, we allow so many different things to deter us from doing what we're supposed to do. We as parents, we as a family, we're supposed to raise our children correctly, not give them every want, need, and desire that they got. They need something to eat, give them something to eat. Don't give this one something, this one something different, this one something different, this one something different. This one something different. Oh, bull! <laughs> That's not the way God intended for you to live your life. Mm -hmm. 
That's not the way we're supposed to have to live our life. Catering and bowing down, especially to our own children. He said, how many times you sat back and kept trying to please your kids and trying to please mom and daddy, whoever it might be, to the point that you're like, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds real familiar, don't it? I want to make everybody around me so happy. Well, you can't do it. Abraham Lincoln said that, didn't he? You can't please all the people all the time. But bless God, you can please yourself. You can be happy in the Lord all the time. Right. Even in spite of everybody else. Amen. That's the part that tickles me. That's the part that tickles me is when they sit back and they're thinking, oh boy, going to stop this tall. Remember I preached up here? Remember what it was? Did the little prince fall down? Yeah. Remember we talked about that? That's what the world is waiting for. Mm -hmm. But when you just go on, and even if you do fall, just go, whoo, got right back up, though, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Still smile about it. Still go on with your life. But too many times, again, I've said it too many times, people will just sit back and they'll just quit. I'm tired of falling. I'm tired of going through it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe you are. Maybe you need to seek out in the face of God and ask him, Lord, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Last week, I encouraged you to take out a piece of paper, did I not? And I said, I want you to write down on that piece of paper whatever it is that's standing in the way of you being the Christian that God wants you to be and you seeing the vision of what God wants you to do. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand to see who done that. <laughs> I know one young man in here did because I got a, got a message from him anyway. I, that's for a different story. It was just a blessing, though. I know somebody that did. Got a bucket full out of it, too. I'll just let you know. But, you know, the thing is, when we understand that to run with patience the race that is set before us, I said it a while ago, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. In the Olympics, if they're out there running on the track, they don't pay attention to exactly where they're going and they cross over into the other lane they're just off by. In a swim meet, if you cross over that floating buoy thing that's out there, you're disqualified just like that. Mm -hmm. Huh? Stay in your lane, run the race that you're supposed to run at the pace you're supposed to run. And I know I keep saying that, and I keep saying it, because I really want you to understand it. Because some of you are even thinking right now of what you've got to do once you get outside of here today. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do that. No, you don't. You've got six other days in the week to do that mess. Today is his day. Today, you worship God and you rest so you can go the other six days. You understand what I'm saying now? That's the pace that you need to have because when you get a calmness in here, when you're seeking after him, the peace is going to come in here and you're going to sit back and go, God's going to take care of it whether I'm out here going a thousand miles an hour or I'm following Amen. him. That's Brother right. Jackie Dell said last week, y'all see him in here, he couldn't even hardly move. He said, but bless God, he said, he said, pick up your cross and follow me. Yes, Period. Sometimes mine may be heavier than yours. Sometimes yours is bigger than mine. Doesn't really matter. It's your cross and your fall with him. I'm picking up my cross. You want to drag mine for me? There that thing's like no. Exactly. Why are you gonna go try to pick up somebody else's and you don't even want to drag your own? I had told people when I was fat. But I kept trying to tell them how to work out and do this and that and the other. Now they was looking at me and I was a big boy. I was 372 pounds. Here I am trying to tell people how to lose weight. But honestly, honestly, it worked. I knew how to go about it. I had the knowledge. I just didn't have the book to. That's exactly right. I wanted to tell somebody else how to do it, and sure enough, they'd lose weight. But sitting back having a fat kid trying to tell somebody how to be thin, <laughs> sounds ignorant, doesn't it? But it's the truth. Don't lie to me, Brother Ray. I'm telling you. <laughs> but it worked. I had people that lost all kind of weight, and then they look at me, and I... <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. I was trying to help them. I thought I was trying to help them, but I was trying to live their life. I wasn't even busy living my own. I got up to 372 pounds. I had bad knees, bad back, sleep apnea. I had all kind of mess going on. I had such acid reflux that that's what happened to all my teeth. I threw up so much acid all the time that it ate all the enamel off my teeth. 
Oh, I sure got a bunch of skinny people, though. I sure helped a lot of other people get skinny, even though I was miserable within myself. Maybe I helped somebody else, but I was miserable in my own body. How many of you are sitting out trying to help somebody else out, and the whole time you're miserable because that is on the inside is rotten and decaying? Mm -hmm. But you want to do like the Bible talks about. You want to make the outside of the sepulcher look good. You want to make it white. You want to make sure the outside of the cup and the saucer is clean, but that is on the inside is nasty and corroded. You need to start taking care of what is on the inside. Lord, where do you want me? Which lane am I in? Keep me where I need to go. Keep me focused on what you want me to do. Amen. Amen. He'll put people in your path if you're there to help them. Amen. But you need to understand the race that, you, that he has put in front of you. You know, I'm going to answer the question for you here real quick that I asked right at the start of this thing. Are we there yet? Anybody got an answers to that? I do. No, we are not. No, we are not. We're on the way. Amen? We're on the way. Over in the book of 2 Timothy. You don't have to turn over if you don't want to. 2 Timothy. Right. No, that was wrong. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Starting at verse six. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Stop right there for just a minute. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Amen? Amen? Huh? 2 Timothy 5, 7, isn't it? 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 6. 6 and 7. Are you there now? Huh? Okay. It says now, it says, I fought a good fight and I have finished my course. Your course will be over either when he comes back or when they put you in that ground out there. Until that time, you're still on a journey, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Till that time, you still got work to do, brothers and sisters. Amen. And you can work while it's still daylight, and you can be happy while you do it. You can be like a seven dwarfs. Whistle while you work. <laughs> huh? Look at everybody grand now. <coughs> like, how are we going to talk about Disney when preacher is supposed to be talking? Yes. You can be joyous and have, look at the smiles. Turn around and look at each other. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You can be joyous and you can be happy even in the face of the adversary. Amen. Praise God. Verse 8, this is what I was telling you about a while ago. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but all, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Praise God. That is the finish line. He just told you right there in his word what the trophy is. And it belongs to you, and to you, and to you, and each and every one of us. It says right there at the end of that, not to me alone. Is that not what it says? But to everyone that loves his coming. Everybody that's in the race, you understand it? No matter how fast you run, hit for For everybody that is in the race, bless God, you're going to get a crown. Amen. Stay in your lane. You do win. So why not be joyous while we're here? Hmm. You know, we uh, we had a lot of time to sit back and we, uh, I said it many times before, we try to live other people's lives. And we don't need to be doing this. And we sit back and we worry about the things going on in our own personal life. Turn with me, we're going to move over a little bit more. I said, Preacher, here you go again, just like last week. On the book of Philippians. Book of Philippians chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 7. Anybody there yet? Amen. 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 Philippians 3, chapter, or chapter 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. 
Yea, doubtless, and all, and I count all these things with loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, the my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Glory. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is, which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is, which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Anybody have any idea exactly what that just said? Or we all quiet. Huh? That I may win Christ. That is our gift. That's who we've got. But I'm going to tell you something. We've already got him. Amen. We've already won him. Because he bought us with the price. Amen. We belong to him. So why not just follow him? Amen. Well, y'all still quiet in here. I'm going to shut it down here in just a few seconds. I promise you I will. But I know y'all get quiet. Y'all looking at me funny. That's why I write too. But you know, we need to understand something. We need to understand something. I'll use this particular verse, and I am going to say this, and I'm going to hush. This particular verse I've used so many different times, and it makes a whole lot of sense. I've tried to stress up here about being in your own lane, running your own pace, running your own race. Over the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 7, it says, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? You did run well. But who hindered you? You did. Mm -hmm. You did. Mm -hmm. You got in your way because you got out from the will of God. You started trying to do things your way, the way sister so-and-so does, the way brother so-and-so. See how they kind of nodded up? where I've been ranting and raving up here all morning. You hindered yourself. I read in there earlier where it said, it says, lay aside all those things which do hinder. Is that what it said? To lay aside all those things which do hinder. And then here in Galatians 5, 7, it says, you did run well. Mm -hmm. But who is it that hindered you? You know, whether you're getting involved with your kids too much, when you're getting involved with your neighbor too much, when you're getting involved with people at work, whatever it might be, the fact is that when you're taking your eyes off of God, you're taking the, you're taking your eyes off of where you're going. There's a whole lot of wrecks that happen on this road because, like I said before, people are texting and driving, ain't paying attention to what they're doing. People get killed every day, all day long, everywhere, texting and driving, texting and driving. Not paying attention to where they're going because they're going down this little narrow road on 41. You got from the yellow line to the white line. That's your side. If you don't stay on your side, what's going to happen? You're going to wreck. You're going to end up in a ditch, in a ditch somewhere. Excuse me. You're going to end up in a ditch somewhere. You're going to run over top of somebody. You're going to injure somebody else because you got out of your lane. You need to get your focus back. Just like the last two weeks, I talked about getting your focus so you can listen to God. Last week, I talked about getting your focus where you can get the vision that God wants for you. Now, you need to understand where it is that he wants you to go and how he wants you to go. But the thing is, I want to stress this to you more and more. I want you to understand that God wants you to be happy. He wants us to be a joyous people. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's what you need to be looking at in your life right now. What is it, who is it, that is stealing your joy today? Something is. Because, you know, I'm been asked to most of you in here, you know, y'all do see me before church. You know, I'm in here and I'm walking around, kind of intermingling in and around people. Y'all don't think he's here for just for looks, do you? Huh? You hear different things. You hear this is going on in this family. I had a lot of people come up to me and say, hey, I got this bothering me. I got that bothering me. That's fine. I don't mind that. I enjoy being able to pray and help people. 
but I also want them to understand that they can have that joy back in them. There's people sitting in here this morning that doesn't have any joy in your life at all. A born-again Christian person and not living like you've got any joy in your life at all. Who is it that hindered you? We started out talking this morning as well. Brother Jack and Dale brought it up. Our brother Noble said, you know, you can watch one TV station and you turn the channel and they're blaming this one and this one's going to blame that one. And we as Christians do that so much. He did this, she did that, this one done this, this one done that. The thing is, is you need to be doing this. This right here is what's hindering you. Not sis, not brother, not sis back here, not my mama. Uh -huh. This one. This one. I've got the book. I know Jesus is my Savior. Jesus said he wants me to be happy, and I'm going to be happy because he said that's why he came. Amen. That's why he came, that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Okay. Is everybody in here living an abundant life this morning? I dare say no. But you can before you leave this morning. You can have the joy restored to you just like that. <laughs> Like that. Your joy can be returned to you and your joy can be full again, just like that. Amen. He said it this morning. He said it this morning. You have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. If you want a closer walk with him, then walk closer to him. Amen. If you want to know what he has in store for you, walk behind him and listen. Pay attention. Slow down. Turn the cell phones off for the afternoon. <laughs> and no way to do that. I set up the hospital when my, when my cousin had surgery. Me and my brother John sat over there. We all got cell phones. I didn't have mine pulled out. Trying to carry on a conversation with some kinfolk that I hadn't seen in quite some time. And there is. Huh? Put your things down. Mama told you that she's not bragging. I love the idea that I can still talk to my We did. We sat back and talked two or three hours last night. <laughs> two different times. <laughs> and it doesn't get old. We have to tell each other, hey, we got to get up in the morning. We need to go to bed. It's beautiful. And we laugh and we kid and we have a good time because we're talking about the Lord. We share a like spirit in God. So, there, you know, Sure, there's things going on in our lives that we don't like. Y'all know she's been sick for the last two to three weeks, but bless God, she's still got the joy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can still be happy in God. Amen. And she's still in her lane, and I'm still in mine, and Brother Jack is in his, and Sister so and so's in his. You understand? Mm -hmm. Your line is from the yellow mark to the white mark. Stay there. Amen. Stay there. Don't get so big that you think you've got to get out here on this four lane and drive like some kind of wild heathen thinking you're going to get there real fast because I'm going to take 41 and I'll be there before you are. This little old turtle will be there a long time before you little sprinters are. And I'll be able to sit back and get me a cup of coffee and wait for y'all little fast rabbits to get there. See, that's the thing we need to understand. Sometimes we need to get out from behind Joe Public. We need to get out from behind following the pack because I'm going to tell you, they don't know where they're going. They're walking just as fast as they can down a wide pit that leads straight to hell. And it says many there's going to be that follow that one. Because they think because everybody's going this way, it must be the right way. It's not. They're not learned. They've not been taught. They've not got in the Bible to come to understand. You don't have to do what the magnitude of people are doing. You just do what Jesus has called you to do. Amen. And when you start doing what Jesus has called you to do, and he's doing it, and he's doing it, and she's doing it, y'all see what takes place in this church, haven't you? When we all get together with one mind and one accord, he's walking, she's walking, he's walking, she's walking. Them two right there are walking. You understand what I'm saying now? When everybody works together, the Bible says we are all part of one body, and we all got to come together and work Amen. together. And bless God, that's the path he has for this church. I still have 
my own walk. You guys still have your own walk. I said it about my husbands and wives a while ago, did I not? But as a church congregation, we have a path to walk as well. Amen. Amen. Y'all wake yet? Yep. Preacher, you said you were going to shut up a while ago. He has had me say that, though. You know, that's the reason everything works out to the way it does. We are in one mind and one accord. And yes, I do know most everybody in here on a personal basis. I know things in your life that you've told me I've been witness to that may be bothering you and troubling you. But bless God, the joy of the Lord is yours for the taking. Amen. And the joy of the Lord can overcome all of that. Amen. I'm not saying he can't take it all away. But I tell you what he's going to do first. He's going to take the care that you have about it away first. Amen. It's not going to eat and gnaw at you near as much. Amen. You still may have problems, but it's not going to gnaw at you as much. Because when you know that God's already been through it, and you know that God's going to take you through it, that's when your happiness should be coming on board. Therefore, whenever he does do it, you can sit back and just and say, I told you so. That's what that man's done sit back here and witness and testified to this morning. He said, I know there's a purpose for my back. And I said, I know what it is. I said, you spoke it out last Sunday. Y'all remember what he said? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not going to take that medicine mess. He said, God said he's going to heal me. I believe he's going to heal me. He still, I'm going to walk down this path. And when he does heal me, praise God, when he does heal me, you know, he could have got off path. And I know I keep bringing up Brother Jack and Dale, but it's truth. Mm -hmm. He could do what everybody else is telling him to do to alleviate his pain. And guess what? If he did, that thing might get back in his mouth and put him even 100 miles further back than what he was before. But bless God, he said, no, I'm in a race. I started out to win this thing, and bless God, I ain't across the finish line. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. I'm not going back to what I was. I'm going to keep pace just right now. I'm not going to run too fast. I'm not going to run too slow. But bless God, I'm going to run where he tells me to run. We got individuals sitting here all over the place that has lived the same kind of life. Amen. You don't have to buy in to everything that the world is telling you. The world will lie to you. You need to line your life up with what this book right here says. You need to understand something. Stand up with me if you would. You need to understand yourself. Something in your life. You don't have to blame anybody. It's like I read in the book of Galatians. You did run well. Who is it that hindered you? Stop pointing fingers and blaming everybody else. If you got out of lane, get back where you're supposed to be. Get down to this altar. Get back where he wants you to be. And then be prepared to run the race that he has set aside for you. It may not be as fast as some other people. Nothing wrong with that. Run and do what he tells you to do. He's not called every one of us to be preachers. He's not called every one of us to be musicians. He's not called every one of us to, to be to work with children. You know, it's like uh, Sister Mary Lou and Sister Mary. He's not done all that, but he has got something for each one of us to do. And it's in your lane. You just need to figure out what it is. And the blessings, when you figure out that you're actually walking behind God, the blessings that are just laying there and laying there and laying there and laying there and laying there. And laying there life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. Gifts are laid out in front of you every day, all day long to the table. It's entirely up to you. Bow your heads if you would. Father God, Lord, I just thank you for the anointing here this morning. And Father God, Lord, I just ask you just to lay your hand upon each one of these individuals in here now. And loving Master, Lord, if there be somebody here this morning, that Lord, it just seems like that there is something that's not quite going right in their life. And Lord, if they're just sitting back in your concern, it's like, I don't know, really know what happened. I don't know where the train went off track. Father God, minister to them. Speak to them now, Lord. Whether it be through the message that you gave me, or whether you talk to them on an individual basis right now. Father God, help them to understand that it's not too late. They've not lost the race, Lord. Don't let them get discouraged. Father God, help them, Lord, to understand where they are. Get them back on track where you'd have them to be. Father God, minister to us each one. Everybody's head is bowed this morning. 
If you need to come down to this altar and have us pray for you, please come down here. You have it within yourself to live a joyous and happy life the way God wants you to. Family can tell you that you're not good enough. Family can take away your joy. Friends can take away your joy. But bless God, God can restore those things that says that the canker has taken away. It can restore those things that the locust has taken away from you. You can have joy in every day of your life. If you are missing that joy, I encourage you to come down to this altar this morning. Bless God. If you don't feel comfortable coming down this morning, just raise your hand where you are and say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we have the ability. We have the ability to get ourselves right back on track where we're supposed to be. Just like this song says, let us have a little talk with Jesus. We can get right back to where we're supposed to be. right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up my sister. Loving Master, Lord, whatever it is that's going on in her life, whatever it is, Lord, that's hindering her, Father God, from living the life that she wants to live for you. Father Lord, we just ask you just to give her the direction that she, that she needs to have. And Father God, that you remove those things out of the way, Lord, it's not of you. Lord, that you take those hindrances and those burdens away from her, Father. Father God, help her to lay down all these things that may be hindering her. Let's let her lay aside the, the stumbling blocks, Father. And I know now, Lord, she may even be thinking that she may not understand how she can do it. Lord, we know that she can on her own power. But, Father God, we know you can deliver your child. We know, Lord, that you can take her out of situations, that you can make those crooked paths straight. And, Father God, Lord, that you can give her the steps that she needs to step. And, Father God, give her the race that she's supposed to run. Father God, that race that she needs to run for you. Not that she has to pull a trailer with everybody else behind her. But Father God, Lord, does she just lift herself up in front of you alone? Father God, strengthen her. Touch Sister Robin now, Lord, and strengthen her. Father God, I bind these things that are going on inside her mind, these tormenting spirits that are upon her. I bind them to silence in Jesus' name. Father God, I ask you just to restore in her a new spirit. Father God, that you clear her mind. Give her that joy and the happiness, Father God, Lord, that you know that you would have her to have. Father God, that she knows that she deserves. Lord, I know that she's missed it for so long. Lord, restore that joy to her that you've already given. Help her, Father God, to see it. And love her, Master, Lord, that you poured out upon her. Father, abundantly, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you just cover this young lady. Father God, that you just anoint her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Father God, we bind these things that are coming against her and her family. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Sunday, I said, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in a pit, sometimes they don't go to hit us and put us in a pit. Y'all remember me preaching on that? Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't have to lay in that pit and die. Amen? And the thing is, as I've been saying all morning, we don't have to run somebody else's race. When we start picking, up self, picking ourselves up and running our own race the way God wants us to, He's going to get those things out of our path. Amen. Those obstacles will be removed. It's not his will that you should live unhappy. Amen. I don't care if it's family, I don't care if it's a kid, I don't care if it's a job, I don't care what it is. If you're not happy, change something. If you're not happy in your spiritual walk, change something. Because you might hit the floor before you go out that door. You want to die unhappy? I don't. 
So if y'all around and I do have to die, y'all make sure they put a big grin on my face. <laughs> now I'm not talking about one of the big joker. You know, <laughs> You know, just, it's not. Now, Jack, it doesn't, I'm going to wake up. You may not be just making up. And this. No, it was his request. And I have it on video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even throw that thing over like you. Praise God. Amen. Let me turn this